Welcome to um, the American Physical Society Journal Club. Very happy to see that you know, we're having uh, a good attendance today and hopefully more people will start joining. Um, so this is uh, sort of the end of August, beginning of September um, Journal Club. And we're delighted to, uh, to present a very cool paper. Um, and so this discussion is gonna be moderated by one of the board members of our journal, Physical Review Research, uh, Rafael Boutet. Um, and uh, before I just sort of give the, uh, the, the direction to him, um, I would just like to remind everybody one more time, uh, please do mute yourself. It's sort of disturbing when the person that is giving the talk, the little background noise is there, please remember to mute yourself. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're just gonna have a, a conversation. Um, and then after that, there will be plenty of time for questions. I mean, usually we go for an hour, but if we need to go uh, a little longer, that will be okay. Uh, so do have time to ask the questions later, uh, but uh, perhaps I would ask you to please do not sort of unmute yourself to ask questions in the middle or, or raise your hand. We can do that later. Um, when you want to ask questions, and I'll sort of say that later as well, uh, you could you can maybe post them in the chat if you like, and we can just read them out loud ourselves. Uh, but we probably also give you the option to unmute yourself and ask, which will be sort of closer to what you would do in a in a conference. Um, all right. So without further ado, um, you know, Rafael, the floor is yours. Okay, great. Thank you, Juan Jose, for the kind introduction. So hello, everybody. My name is Rafael Butte. I'm a senior scientist at the Institute of Physics of the Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne, also known as the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne, Switzerland. I'm also an editorial board member of physical research since the journal was launched. So my research focus is on condensed matter physics, semiconductors, optoelectronics, and nanophotonics. And this is really a pleasure to moderate this physical research journal club. So today we will hear about carol emission induced by optical Zeeman effect in pariton micropillars by Bastian Real and co-workers. And the presentation will be given by Dr. Alberto Amo, who is CNRS researcher at the University of Lille in France. Alberto and Jacqueline Bloch, who is a co-author of this work, have both supervised the work we will discover today. And the reason why I have picked this work is related to the fact that in a recent past, I was myself involved in microcavity polaroton physics. This is still the case, but not as much as it used to be. And to make a long story short, microcavity polaritons are a very interesting platform to investigate light like matter interaction phenomena taking place in condensed matter systems. And in fact, such bosonic quasi-particles allowed to explore phenomena as diverse as polariton condensation and lasing, but also superfluidity, solitons, polariton blockade, and recently single polariton nonlinearity, to name just a few. All those phenomena are enabled by giant polariton interactions. And the groups that are led by Alberto and Jacqueline have really been instrumental to uncover this type of physics. In particular, during the past few years, Alberto and Jacqueline, together with their colleagues, have shown that microcavity polaritons constitute a very interesting toolbox in order to explore topological phases of matters by optical means. And as you will see in a minute, the present work is covering some of those aspects as it shows clear signature of time reversal symmetry breaking for microcavity polaritons in the absence of any external magnetic field. But I have already said too much and I leave the floor to our speaker of today, Dr. Alberto Amo. So Alberto, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rafael. Thank you for the invitation um, to participate in this journal club. I, it's really a pleasure to see, I mean, that there is uh, maybe some uh, a space where we can uh, comment uh, the papers where that are published in uh, physical review research. So it's really it's really a pleasure. So I would try to well, I would try to share my screen to begin with. Uh, I will see if I can manage to do this. Okay, here we are. Okay, let's 
five. Right. Here, here. Okay, here we are. Okay, so can you you can see my screen? Okay, perfect. So thanks a lot. Thanks a lot again, Rafael, for, for this opportunity and also Juan Jose for for all the arrangements to, to, to present this work. So um, uh, Rafael mentioned it, it's, uh, the work is on, on microgravity polaritons and I would walk you on, on these systems, which is a very interesting one because it mixes the properties of light and matter. And uh, we can make very fun things, a lot of uh, interesting things with, with this, this mixing. So let me just acknowledge the, 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 the people who have participated in this work. So it was mainly uh, covered by, the experiments were main, mainly done by Bastian Real in, in Bill. And uh, this is indeed a collaboration with the group of Jacqueline Block um, with whom we designed the experiment and all the samples were grown in, uh, in at the Center of Nanoscience and Nanotechnologies, which is in, a, in the University of Paris-Saclay, very close to Paris. Uh, in a very big uh, facility they have in, and in which they have mastered this fabrication. So let me motivate the work uh, a bit in the spirit of uh, what uh, Rafael just uh, mentioned. So we are in our group, we are very interested in um, studying topological uh, phenomena in photonic lattices. And um, topological phenomena in photonic lattices uh, it requires uh, several ingredients uh, in order to 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 observe uh, topological edge states. And I will I will show you a bit uh, how how it works. And one of them is actually to break down reversal symmetry in the system. So that's the basis of the quantum hole effect. So in the quantum hole effect, which is an electronic uh, um, phenomenon, you have a two-dimensional material in which you apply a magnetic field. It breaks down reversal symmetry. And uh, the breaking of time reversal symmetry uh, give rise to this uh, the appearance of edge channels which transport the, the electrons. And, and these edge channels are actually uh, topologic, topologically robust and, 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 uh, and they appear in, in some what we call topological gaps. Uh, and these, these uh, gaps appear thanks to the breaking of time reversal symmetry. So breaking time reversal symmetry is really a, a, one of the requirements to observe the topological physics. So these ideas actually were brought to photonics uh, in, uh, by, by, by Duncan Haldane and, and collaborators and were realized uh, for the first time uh, in, in using electromagnetic waves uh, in 2009 by the group of Marin Soliacic. So this is the, 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 um, the slide I'm, I'm showing here. So on the left, you see the system they used. Uh, the system they used is a system of, uh, is a lattice uh, of, um, ferrite um, um, posts that you can see here, which uh, works uh, for a microwave, uh, microwave um, for microwaves, for the microwave. So if you look at the, at the photonic bands, it's called photonic bands of, of the system, they, are, they appear in this uh, central, um, um, central figure here. Here you have the frequency, you have the momentum, and then in blue, you have the, 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 the photonic bands of the system. You have some gaps, this, this is another photonic band. And when they apply a magnetic field, thanks to the uh, magnetic de dependence of this uh, of the index of refraction of this heliotropic material, actually, in some of the gaps, they observe the appearance of modes that are located on the edges of the of the material and that are unidirectional. Okay, so this is the this is the uh, simulation in which they they have a magnetic field going through the material, and you see that electromagnetic waves go in one direction, even around obstacles. Okay, so this is a, a, a topological edge channel. So this was done at, the, at that time in, in, this, in this microwave material um, because microwave materials have some sensitivity to magnetic field. Some year, sometime later, in uh, 2017, there was another uh, um, observation of uh, edge transport in this, this time at, mic, mic, at 1.5 microns in a photonic crystal using also a magnetic material. Uh, so they put this magnetic material in the, um, in the magnetic field uh, and this photonic crystal here uh, has some some edges, and and this this is the group of uh, Wubakar Kante um, would observe uh, the, the transport of, of light actually in, in a lazy mode around this uh, this this edge state here. Here you have an image in which you can see the light uh, located at the edges, and then there is a waveguide here, and light comes out from the waveguide on this side, 
uh, and this in in this shows that this the, the transport is 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 chiral. Okay, this is one of the properties of topological space. More more recently, there was a work using polaritons, but it's not coming from our group. Uh, in which again they put uh, the, um, a gallium arsenide based microcavity in a in a magnetic field, and they observe this this transport. So, you know this 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 uh, this works. What I uh, what I the, the key element is the breaking of time reversal symmetry. So you need to use very magnetic fields, which can be actually very high. You see here on the left, five Tesla. And what we wanted to, to address is the possibility of inducing a magnetic effects uh, without the use of an external magnetic field. And, uh, and what I'm going to show you is that we can actually induce magnetic effects in a microcavity system using uh, optics, using just a circularly polarized light, okay? So how does that work? So in order to, to, to have this magnetic effect, what we need to, to have is, a, is a, a system in which we can um, uh, provide some uh, matter uh, uh, properties to, to the photons. And that's why we choose to use uh, microcavity, microcavity polarity. This is the, the typical uh, structure of a, of a microcavity. Here you have a black mirror. So it's made out of uh, alternating layers of uh, two different semiconductors, actually aluminum gallium arsenide and gallium arsenide. They have slightly different index of re refraction and we just stack them in lambda over four, uh, in layers of lambda over four thickness, you can make a black mirror. You put two of them together, leaving a, a spacer between them, you make a microcavity. So this is just a fabri perot microcavity in which you have some confined modes. We, we work in the lowest mode, actually, the lowest uh, fabri perot mode. And what we add uh, in, in the system is a, is a quantum well here in the middle, a gallium arsenide quantum well. So this gallium arsenide quantum well is, is sketched here. So this is the energy um, of the semiconductor material. And this is the, 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 the growth direction. So actually, the, the quantum well is no gallium arsenide. It's Indian gallium arsenide, doesn't matter. Uh, so you, you have a region in which the gaps, this is the valence band, and this is the conduction band. So you have a region in, the, in which the gap is, is, is small, and this is the quantum well. And, and in this region, the excitations, electronic excitations, uh, um, consist of uh, promoting an electron from the valence band to the conduction band, and you leave a hole behind, and they bind together, this electron and this hole, and they form an exciton, okay? So the, the, um, the transition energy of this exciton is actually um, such that it corresponds to the lowest photonic mode of the, of the microcavity. And in that, in that case, what happens is that the exciton uh, is formed in the, in the quantum well, uh, then it, uh, it recombines and emits light, and the light stays in the cavity, is trapped in the capillary cavity. And then the, the quantum well again absorbs the, the photon and creates an exciton, becomes a photon, an exciton, a photon, an exciton, a photon. And this, this is recycling going on all the time. And then the eigenmodes, uh, are no longer photon or excitons independently, but actually combine uh, particles, mixed particles, which are partly exciton and partly photon. And this is the nice feature about it, is that they com it combines the properties of both, um, of both, um, both worlds, photons and excitons. So for instance, from the photonic part, we can, um, if, uh, we can use the photonic part to, to to confine further the, 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 the polaritons and, and make uh, lattices or micro pillars that I'm going to show you in a second. And from the excitonic part, um, we can also um, get interactions of, uh, of the care type, I3 interactions. We can also get sensitivity to magnetic fields. Okay? Um, um, and or, or we can use the, this, this excitonic part as an active element and a, a half laser. Okay? At some point, light also escapes out of the cavity. And when the light, uh, with the polariton converts into a photon that escapes out of the cavity, we can actually uh, look at them, uh, look at it in a, in a CCD camera and, and study the properties of the polariton. Okay, so this is what we get from the um, MB machine, the molecular beam epitaxy machine, it's a two dimensional cavity. And then what we can do is we can etch it, we can chemically etch it and fabricate this kind of micro pillars here. So in these micro pillars, uh, light is confined uh, in the three dimensions of space, in the vertical direction by the black mirrors, as I showed before, and in the horizontal direction is confined by the fact that this material here, this spacer, is uh, also gallium arsenide based, and it has a very high index of refraction, 3.5. So 
So then it uh, it confines light uh, uh, by by total refraction if you want, uh, because outside we have an inverse refraction or a fraction of one. So then the the, the photonic modes and therefore the polariton modes uh, have a discretized nature. So this is the this is um, an image of the photoluminescence of this micropillar uh, as a function in, in space. So it's a cut along the diameter. Uh, what we do here is we we excite the the system with a laser. Uh, at high energy, um, and uh, this creates electrons and holes that relax in the quantum wells, forms polaritons, occupy all the photonic modes, or polaritonic modes of the micropillar, and then light is emitted. And we record this light and uh, and resolve the emission in a spectrometer. And you can see here we have a uh, the lowest energy mode is uh, is the, the lowest energy mode of the micropillar. We call it S mode because it has a cylindrical symmetric shape. Uh, reminding a bit the, the, the shape of the atomic orbitals, the S atomic orbital. And this, uh, this uh, multiplet that you see here corresponds to the P modes. So it's, these are the first excited modes. We have some lobes that I'm going to show you now. Okay, so how does the dynamics of light, how the dynamics of light, how does it look uh, in, the, in the system? How, how can we model it? So uh, we can write these equations, which are very very simple. These are Schrodinger-like equations that, uh, that uh, describe the, the, the dynamics of light here. So we have uh, the, the, the field in the sigma plus uh, circular polarized, polarized uh, mode. So these modes are actually doubly degenerate. We have two polarizations, sigma plus and sigma minus. This is the energy of the S mode. Okay, this is the energy of the S mode. I'm only describing the S mode here. And this, this term here, this is the, the losses. So this is the photons that are escaping out of the cavity. That's why there is, they have an I here, so yeah, and a minus sign, photons escape out of the cavity. And this other term is actually a term that fits the, the polariton mode and fits this polariton mode from the reservoir. Okay, And this reservoir is this excitons that are at higher energy and that are not coupled to light. We have these excitons, dark excitons, that are not coupled to light. So we can pump this exciton with the external laser. That's what the process I, I showed you before. And, um, and we can write an equation for this, uh, this reservoir excitons. And this equation is written here. So here is the, the, the laser, OK? And this plus means that we are uh, injecting sigma plus uh, excitons, or which means spin up, which are attached to circularly, circularly polarized light, tri circularly polarized light, OK? Minus is for the other polarization. And then the, this term uh, describes the relaxations toward the polariton mode. Was this this, uh, this 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 field here, and this is the the, the losses of, of of the of the reservoir, and the non non relative losses. We have a, the, a, an equation which is exactly the same, but for the other polarization. Okay, so this is the basic equations you have, but this is not the whole story actually. We also have nonlinearities in the system, and these nonlinearities are coming from the excitonic part. So let's include the nonlinearity. So there are two types of nonlinearities. Uh, First type is this one that appears here. This is a polariton polariton nonlinearities that happens uh, within this S mode that are very small and I'm going to neglect them. Okay. And the second type of nonlinearities is this term here, uh, which is uh, the, the interaction between the polaritons that are here and the reservoir of excitons that are here. Okay. So the excitonic part of the polaritons down here in the S mode interacts repulsively with the reservoir polaritons, the reservoir excitons that are at higher energy. And this is going to be the, the this is the term that we are going to control to manipulate to, in, to induce a sigma splitting and break and reversal signature. Okay, so um, one very interesting thing. So this is the term that we are interested in. One thing that you can notice from these two equations is that they are decoupled. So we, I, we have an equation for sigma plus polarized light, and we have an equation for sigma minus polarized light, and they are decoupled. Even the nonlinearity is decoupled. And the reason is that in polaritons, there is a very special feature, and it's that the interactions, polariton-polariton interactions, or polariton-exciton interactions, are strongly dependent on the polarization. So basically, polaritons with the same uh, polarization, the same spin, they interact repulsively very strongly, and polaritons with opposite polarization, they don't interact uh, between them, or very, 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 very small. The interaction is very small. Here, I have neglected. Okay. So this is this is a, a very interesting feature and it's very unusual, uh, and it comes from the uh, light matter interaction uh, that uh, gives rise to polarity. And if you want, we can I can discuss about the origin of this uh, 
spin select spin dependent interaction in, in the after the after the presentation. Okay, but the important point here is that it is present, and that's why these two uh, questions are decoupled. So if they are decoupled, now we can very nicely uh, excite one uh, of the modes, create a, a very big uh, exciton reservoir, have a very big uh, number of uh, sigma plus excitons n plus very big. So this is, has a, a plus sign here. So with this means that it's going to blue shift this uh, this uh, this polaritons, the polaritons with sigma plus light, uh, and it will not blue shift the polaritons with sigma minus. And this is exactly what what we do. Okay. Well, I was saying sigma plus, but in the in the experiment we do sigma minus, but it's a matter of definition. So this is what we do. We excite the system with a sigma minus laser. It creates a reservoir of n minus excitons. We also have a, a bit of reservoir of n plus excitons, and this is because the exciton reservoir depolarizes, uh, depolarizes a, li a little bit, actually not a little bit, significantly, but still we have still an imbalance. So then what happens if we look at the, at the spectrum, at the, at the light emitted by the, at this mode and, the end, and, the, and its energy, this is what happens at low power. At low power, this term is negligible. Okay? This term is also negligible, as I was mentioning. So we have two lines for sigma plus light and for sigma minus light, and they are one on top of each other because they have the same energy. Uh, but now when we start to increase the power, this, res this N minus reservoir will actually be stronger than the N plus, and it will induce a blue shift of, in of energy for the sigma minus line that will be much stronger or stronger than the one for the sigma plus line. And you can see it here already. This at higher power, you can see the splitting appearing. And at even higher power, the splitting is even more. Okay, this is the this is the one we keep track of the of the energy of this of these modes, and you see that the uh, splitting appears. This is Siemens splitting in the sense that um, polaritons with different polarizations have a different energy. So it looks really like a like a Siemens splitting that you would expect for a for a spin particle, like an electron with with spin. And it is entirely induced by the external pump laser. Okay. So the fact that we have this splitting, that we have a different energies. Um, Different, uh, um, uh, sorry, different um, energy, different polarizations. This is a, a way of uh, a, a signature of the fact that we are breaking the time reversal symmetry. In the system. So, uh, of course, if we put linearly polarized pump, uh, we um, we blue sheet both modes in the same way, and then we see no no split. Okay? This is just a counter a counter. Okay, so now that we have this, now that we have this um, this. Uh, the splitting um, for the S modes. Okay, this is very nice. We can see that we can induce it optically. So can we do the question we ask ourselves is can we do something a little bit more fancy with it, a little more fun? And and the answer is yes, even within this single microfilament. And I'm going to show you how we can do that, how we can do something more. So the, the more that we can do is actually it's actually lies actually in the in the P mode. So the PMOS have a very interesting structure that I'm going to show you now. So you see there are three lines. Why are there three lines? So let's start from the beginning. So the, these P modes actually, they, they are, there are two modes, uh, PX and PY mode, or we can change the basis, could be P diagonal, P anti diagonal, doesn't matter. Or we can actually use another basis, uh, this one plus uh, I this one, and this one minus I this one, and this will have, this will, this will induce, um, this will result in these vortices, okay? So these lobes, they have plus phase, minus phase. So when we combine them, we can actually uh, create these vortices. So this is L equal plus one vortex. So the phase is going from zero to two pi in this direction. And this is the L equal minus vortex. So phase is going from zero to two pi in the other direction. This is just a change of basis. And there is nothing, nothing, nothing particular. So we have these two modes. Uh, and these two modes, each of these two modes should have two polarizations, sigma plus and sigma minus. So this is our basis. This is the basis of PMO. But they should all, uh, all four of them have the same energy. And you see here that there are three lines. Okay, why are there three lines? Well, there are three lines because in, um, in these confined geometries, um, polarization degrees of freedom and momentum degrees of freedom or orbital degrees of freedom are coupled. So there is a spin orbit coupling. And this spin orbit coupling is very well known in, in, in these micro cavities, has been studied many times. This, I'm just giving you an example in which. Uh, in a very similar geometry, this was already reported. So how does the fine structure of these P modes look like? So we have a lowest energy mode is here, which is this it has this combination of 
vortices plus one sigma minus, vortices minus one sigma plus. Okay? This one corresponds actually to a radial or a simut, I don't remember if it's radial or a simutal polarization in the, in, around the, the pillar. The upper mode is, is very similar. This is a bonding uh, mode and this is an anti bonding mode. So this is a combination with a different side. And what the, the interesting modes here are actually the ones in the middle. You see, this, the ones in, in the middle, you have two modes at the same energy, one with L equal plus one vortex for sigma plus polarization, and another one for L equal minus one vortex for sigma minus polarization. So now, if we induce a, a sigma splitting into these levels here, we will have uh, we, we will be able to separate vortex, vortical beams with opposite chiralities, and they, which will have different energies, different emission energies. And this is exactly what we want to do. So we now excite the system with this sigma minus uh, pump laser. We create this reservoir of n minus excitons, and what we will see is that these modes don't change or change very little, and these modes in the middle in the middle will uh, will um, split. And uh, this is what we see in experiments. So in the experiment, we see we see that at low pump power, we have the three lines. This, this here, there are two modes that are degenerate. And as we increase the pump power, the lowest energy mode makes some blue shift, uh, shows some blue shift. The upper one also shows some blue shift. And the middle one, we see a clear split. Okay. You can see that more uh, clearly in this uh, in this um, in this uh, spectra. So it is a low power. You see the three lines, uh, sigma plus and sigma minus. Have the same are, are located at the same positions, and at high power we have a peak up here, another peak down there, corresponding to the upper and, and uppermost and lowermost mode, and in the middle we have the spilling. Okay, so this is and get the, the, the semen spilling. And now these modes have are chiral; they have a chirality, they have a circulation. So if we look at, if we sell, we we select this energy of emission. If we select this energy of emission. And we do an interferometric experiment on, on the on the light uh, in the in the pillar. This is the, the, the shape of the pillar. So this is an interferometric experiment. We we make it um, we, we interfere the light with um, with a reference beam. We see that uh, indeed there is a, 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 an optical angular momentum associated to this mode, uh, which shows up in the phase. So the phase goes from zero to two pi in that direction. Okay. So this is a an L equal minus one board. And if we select it with a spectrometer the other uh, energy, the other, the other emitted energy, we see that the vortex goes in the other direction. Okay. So we break the universal symmetry to induce chirality, uh, orbital chirality in, into this into these modes. So this is just like a very basic situation in which you can you start to play with um, with uh, these modes, and uh, I'm going to the to the summary here. Uh, you start to play with these modes to, 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 to induce chirality by breaking the time reversal symmetry. I would like to mention uh, this, um, this other work that uh, was published very recently uh, from the group of, of, of Sheffield, of uh, Dima Krzanowski, in which they use the same idea, the, exactly the same, in the few photon level. So they excite the system in resonance with very few photons, and they induce um, the blue shift of one of the modes, or the one of the sigma plus or sigma minus modes, in a way that uh, photons going through that uh, through that uh, mode uh, feel a phase um, phase shift uh, that is induced by very few photons. Actually, they observe uh, phase shifts that are actually significant uh, by by the presence of three photons. So this is a very nice uh, very nice work in which uh, it's basically the same physics but taken to the low photon number level. And now that we can we can do that, that we can do this um, this Siemens splittings. So what we would like to to look at is uh, at um, configurations in which we have lattices, and in these lattices we can stagger the Siemens field, um, <clears throat> and um, and create maybe some exotic uh, lattice uh, physics uh, in which there is some time reversal symmetry breaking. Okay. Uh, and another of, of another goal we have is actually to induce a, a, a churn topological insulator in a two-dimensional lattice. But instead of using a magnetic field, we would like to use a, a, a pump, a circularly polarized pump that will break the reverse asymmetry and give rise to to, to these uh, topological edge modes. So this this idea actually has been uh, theoretically um, demonstrated, uh, and we are working on the experiment. Okay. So with this, I, I I I thank you for your attention, and I'm open for discussion and 
Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Alberto, for this uh, very clear presentation and for having chosen with your colleagues to submit your work to physical research. Uh, okay, so we now have time for questions. So I, I remind what uh, Juan Jose mentioned at the beginning of the, of the session. So people can either type their questions in the chat and I'll read them, or you can use instead the raised hand button and I will select people and you will be able to unmute yourself to ask your question if this is the solution you prefer. Uh, I would rather promote this solution. So to initiate the discussion, I will get started with the first question. Uh, it's the advantage of being a moderator. So uh, my question, Alberto, will deal with the sample quality. So. Uh, could you comment on the challenges you had to overcome in order to be able to observe the reported physics? So in other words, uh, was the success of your experiments mostly related to the MB growth of the planar microcavity itself? Or would you say that the micropillar fabrication did also play a key role in order to, to see the physics you, you've reported? I would say that it's a combination of everything. So there, are, there were two challenging aspects in this in this work, uh, or mo two most challenging aspects. One of one of them is the, um, the fact that uh, we need to have a polarized reservoir. So we inject our polaritons at our our exciton, sorry, at high energy, and uh, and um, and this excitonic reservoir actually te has tendency to depolarize. So so excitons that are injected like this at, after a few picoseconds, nanoseconds, they flip their spin, and then the other, the other reservoir is polarized, and then if both reservoirs are equally polarized, are equally populated, there is no semen splitting anymore. So there are actually special energies at, uh, at which you can inject with your laser, related maybe to phonon, phonon relaxation, which uh, are optimal to, to do this. But the, the, in this experiment, we could not get a polarization higher than 20%, actually. Um, so we are now currently studying other configurations in which we can uh, enhance this uh, reservoir polarization. So this was the, the, the first challenge. Second challenge is, is, is actually right here. So you see this, <clears throat> this uh, splitting between the modes. Uh, this splitting, as I explained, comes from this uh, uh, spin orbit coupling, this coupling between polarization and, and, and orbital angular momentum. And uh, to engineer that, we need to play with the, the design of the microcavity. And now we know that if the, if the microcavity mode is not centered in, the, in what we call the stop band, which is the, the, the region uh, in which the, the, the reflectivity of the mirrors is the, is the highest, it's not centered in that region. Basically, if the cavity is lambda over two, uh, and the, the mirrors are lambda over four, but the lambda is slightly different for the mirrors and for the cavity, we know that this spin orbit coupling is enhanced. So um, here there is an offset of the lambdas of 3%, uh, but um, it's, this is it's very complicated to control that in the, in the MBA machine. Uh, so uh, this was one of the challenges to, to find, uh, to, to optimize the growth to have this, uh, uh, this mismatch that, that gives rise to this uh, spin orbit coupling. And this spin orbit coupling is really one of the most interesting parts of the, of the work because it allows to, to, to create this chiral emission. Okay, thank you for the clear answer. Uh, so do we have someone So I'm checking? Uh, um, so let me just, uh, someone sent me a question directly, so I'm just gonna ask it. Yeah. Um, it was Jenna one. I said, thank you for the nice talk. Could you estimate how large is the TRSB field strength? Uh, time reverse asymmetry breaking field strength. Um, uh, so I guess the, the question is how, what, if there is an, equ an equivalent magnetic field uh, equivalent um, that would, would uh, I, we could assign to the to the splitting that we have here. Okay, so what I can say is that um, 
actually uh, this uh, I, I, was, I was mentioning that this polaritons uh, the excitonic part um, is sensitive to magnetic fields so we could actually add an extra term here that I, I haven't done it but we could add an extra term here which will be a Seaman term based on external magnetic field okay here we don't have any, any external magnetic field but we could add an external magnetic field uh, and this will also create a Seaman split so the splittings we are seeing here are on the order of the splittings, the Seaman splittings that you get with an external magnetic field in similar cavities at around 5, 8 Tesla. Okay, so we are kind of uh, in the regime of parameters that, that uh, we, can, uh, we can identify here. We are inducing a, a magnetic field which is equivalent to 8 Tesla. I, I, ho I hope this helps answering the question. Thank you. There is another question uh, I can see yeah. in the chat. Yeah. So it's can you comment on the maximum Zeman splitting you can uh, you have achieved using this technique? Does the technique rely on strong uh, spin orbit coupling? So, um, so the maximum splitting we get in this technique depends on uh, several parameters. So one parameter is on the excitonic content of the of the polaritons. So we can play with how much exciton and how much polariton, uh, um, sorry, how much photon we have in our polaritons. Okay, so let me just go back to this. Okay, so here there are coefficients, this uh, x and this c, and we can play with them. We can play with them by the tuning the, the, the exciton um, resonance with the photonic resonance. So in these polaritons that I'm showing here, the, the exciton part is 25%. So if we increase the excitonic part, the interactions increase significantly. So we could have a much stronger um, Seaman splitting uh, for the same reservoir. But at the same time, the, the properties of, the, of the, the, the line width of the polariton degrades when we increase the excitonic part. So then our lines will be broader. So then it will be more difficult to see the splitting. Uh, so there is a, a combination and a, or a, there is a sweet point Point that we found uh, to 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 make this observation, but indeed we could increase it either by putting more external content or, as I was saying, working on the depolarization of the reservoir. So if the reservoir would be more polarized, and that's what we get. Uh, then we could uh, increase the the value of the of the Seaman speed. So in the, in that in that sense, the the, the spinor recoupling doesn't play a role uh, for the Seaman speed. It plays a role. Uh, when we want to use this chirality. So yeah, there, there it, it does play a role. Okay, thanks. So uh, I will ask the next question by uh, Alfred Tong. So is breaking time reversal symmetry the same as breaking Carroll symmetry? Maybe I missed something. Did you talk about time reversal symmetry in your work? Yes. So yeah, this is uh, something um, that is sometimes confusing in this uh, field, particularly in the field of topological physics. So here we are showing a time reversal symmetry. So uh, this means that the, the, the time reversal symmetry, which in which uh, in your Hamiltonian you have that k goes to minus k, spin up goes to spin uh, goes to spin down, it's broken. This symmetry is broken. It's not present anymore. And this is basically what you have when you put a magnetic field in your sample or in your system. If your system is sensitive to magnetic field, okay. Um, chiral symmetry. Uh, the word chiral is a bit confusing because it refers to many, many different things. So, for instance, in a lattice, in a lattice, uh, chiral symmetry is a is a, um, is a is a symmetry of the lattice. Okay, so it's um, and it's related to the fact that uh, you have different sublattices. For instance, in graphene, you have different sublattices. It means that your particles they they jump. They, they, they hop from one sublattice to the other sublattice, but they don't hop from one sublattice to the same sublattice. Okay, and this chiral symmetry in these uh, lattices uh, imposes some interesting things in the in the in the spectrum of the of your of your eigenmodes. For instance, it means that the the bond the, the, the upper band and the lower band they are symmetric in some in some aspects. Okay, so this is one way of understanding chiral chirality in the in context of topology. And here we don't have a lattice, so we don't have this chiral symmetry. Not there anymore. It's not. It's not just. It doesn't apply to our system. Uh, here we have. I, I use the word chirality to to 
define this uh, orbital angular momentum, momentum uh, these different orbital angular momentum modes, the one that is going like that, and that like that, and the one that is going like this. Okay, so this is this is these are modes we have a phase gradient in one direction and another direction. I was using the word chiral for for that, but this is not related to chiral symmetry, which is a notion, a concept that is assigned more to lattice physics. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Alberto. And the next question uh, by Maurice Kolnick: uh, Can you achieve larger reservoir polarization by pumping the reservoir more resonantly? Um, we have tried this. We have tried this, uh, and what we, we we what we see. So this is a Galileo Marshall example. Right? Maurice, Maurice Kolnick is a specialist, so I will make I will give a more specialist answer. So, so. We uh, we try to, to do that to, to pump the, the reservoir on resonance, and what we uh, we couldn't uh, get a better polarization. What we observe is a, a, a line width reduction uh, of the polaritons, and I think this may, this is related to the fact that we are creating less uh, free carriers, and these free carriers are actually uh, creating some spectral wandering of the lines uh, and moving the lines and in, in increasing the line width. So we, we observe that, but we don't know. But we, we could not actually go into into more polarized reservoir. We are a bit uh, disappointed about that. But what we are now thinking of uh, doing is the following. I think this will be a much better strategy. Uh, it's uh, let me just go to the here. So here, this is the S mode. This is the P mode, and we have also D modes, F modes, and higher higher modes. So what we would like to to do is to in, to inject light. For instance, in the D modes, okay, in on resonance. So coupling will not be perfect, but if we uh, we inject directly uh, sigma plus light into these uh, modes, for instance, uh, all these other guys will feel a a, a much strongly polarized uh, reservoir. In this case, the reservoir it will not be a reservoir; it will be a a polariton field, a polariton gas at, at a different mode. And I think that could be could be successful. We are we are for in this situation right now. Uh, yeah, a related question to what you have just said. <clears throat> so when, when pumping to the D mode, to an excited mode, the relaxation toward the lower uh, confined modes uh, is as efficient as when pumping in the reservoir? Or? Um, <clears throat> Well, I cannot tell you. Uh, I haven't tried, and uh, and these uh, interactions are actually quite non-trivial. The polariton polariton interactions are quite non-trivial, so so I I cannot I cannot answer the question. I don't know. I don't know the answer. But I I would expect the relaxation to be not very efficient actually, uh, because you you have uh, you are in the region where you have like a confined this discretized mode. So then maybe uh, energy conservation rules are more. Uh, more constringent, constringent than when you start uh, the reservoir. I don't know, but in any case, we don't we don't want to lace or condense on the lowest mode, so we don't care that much if the relaxation is not good. What we want to to do to do is to enhance this Siemens feeling. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, maybe another question on my side is so. We, we know that you rely a lot on the Galileo Marsonite platform, but over the past few years, many of the platforms emerged, such as perovskites or uh, transition metal dichalcogenides. So, you, would you say that your platform is quite unique in order to reveal this type of physics with polaritons, or do you think that? other systems could also be of interest and they would bring an added value. Yes, so um, I, I think this phenomenon is quite universal. Um, what I mean is that I don't think it's material dependent, uh, so it can be translated into other systems. So here what, what, what is important is this, uh, is this um, um, the spin dependent uh, interactions, but in principle they Similar spin-dependent interactions should be present also in, in maybe in 2D materials or in or in um, various kites. Uh, for instance, I, I want to mention this work here uh, in natural nanotechnology. Uh, this is uh, a work in, two, in a 2D material. I don't remember which one, uh, 
uh, in which they also observe blue shifts that are dependent on spin. And I had a feeling that here the mechanism is not, there is no micro cavity there. Uh, so it's not, it does not rely on the, um, on, on the light matter interaction, which in our case is the basis of the, of the phenomenon. Um, and uh, I think that in here they, they use the, the phase space filling. Uh, they have two different valleys, so they populate one valley and then this uh, changes the resonances of the valley. Uh, so, so it shows that actually this kind of like uh, independent uh, fittings uh, could could uh, could appear in, in other systems. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, maybe I will jump again to the next question. Uh, since there is a uh, non others in uh, in the chat right now. Um, yeah. In your paper, you, you, you mentioned that you can determine the uh, interaction constant between polaritons, the alpha one. And, and uh, from your measurements, the, the deduced value, was it consistent with uh, the one that is commonly reported in the community? Well, I, I remember that it, there, were, there have always been some debates about the magnitude of this type of constant. Yeah, uh, so uh, in the, uh, actually in the paper, we I don't think we really um, estimate the the exact value. What we do is uh, we 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 estimate the, the 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 polarization of the reservoir uh, by looking at the blue shifts. So 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 we use the blue shifts so the interaction to estimate the polarization of the polarization of the reservoir. I think this this uh, this issue is is no longer so much of a debate. So I'm here in the UK right now in Nottingham. There was a presentation of Dimitri Stanowski uh, like one hour ago, one hour before the, we did this, this presentation here. And he was showing the, the, the results and, the, and compared them to the, to the literature. And I think now we are all more or less, uh, we are more or less agree that uh, this value is on the order of five to 20 micro electron volts, micrometer square for the specialists. Um, which is not so different from from what uh, is is being seen in in two D materials in the calcogenides in some situations and 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 it might be different in other in other configurations like the polar polaritons for instance. But I, I think that this uh, this is more or less uh, the, the order of magnitude is more or less clear and it's an order of magnitude because we still have trouble in. Uh, measuring precisely the number of excitations that we have in the system. But this is a more like a technical problem. But the order of magnitude, I think, is now well established. OK, thank you. Uh, yeah, maybe another final question on my side, and we'll see if another one will uh, emerge from the, from the audience. Uh, could you come back on? what you, you showed at the very end and elaborate a bit more on, on the prospects with uh, those coupled uh, macro pillars and mm -hmm. yeah, just can yeah, you make so, us uh, dream a bit? <laughs> so this is really, I mean, this the, the, the idea here is not being, it has not been well developed. I think it's an interesting perspective, the fact that if you put these samples in a magnetic field, as I mentioned, a Tesla, you would see the same kind of like uh, sort of semen splitting. So one advantage of this all, all optical uh, uh, configuration is that you can create semen uh, um, splitting patterns, or in other words, like a, a magnetic field pattern. So you could have uh, different orientations in different places, and this may be interesting, but I, I honestly have not identified a specific Hamiltonian that has an interesting um, property using this uh, stagger Simon fields. I would like to find one. So if you have any, any uh, um, if you want to propose any, something, uh, we are more than open to that. I think this one is the one that is more exciting for me in, in the right, uh, right, right now, which is uh, <clears throat> trying to observe this uh, topological uh, edge modes uh, in these uh, honeycomb lattices. So this 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 requires to, uh, to have uh, like a strong TTM splitting, so a strong uh, spinor recoupling. 
and um, the idea now is to induce the, the semen splitting with uh, with a with a reservoir or with some uh, restaurant excitation. So then then you will have um, a topological insulator for photons without the need of any external magnetic field or optical. So maybe you can even sell it as a nonlinear <laughs> one. Uh, so so I think this is a very exciting perspective. Imagine you can have like a like uh, this edge mode spiral in one direction, and uh, and if you change the well, the degree of polarization, the circular degree of polarization of your pump or your laser, then the light will go in the other direction. I think that's very very beautiful. That will be very beautiful. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, does anybody have a final question? Uh, uh, maybe I can just ask a question. Yes. Please, Maurice. Um, so, in the last case, where would you pump the structure? So, uh, all over, all over the, all over the place. <laughs> so, this is one of the difficulties, indeed. The other difficulty in this, in this, in this uh, system is the wedge. So, we have a wedge, and uh, we would love to have samples without a wedge, but it, that's it's really complicated to have the, to to have them on the right in the tuning. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, thank you. So in the end, we always come back to sample quality and the control. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's a challenge. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? So if not, uh, we now come to the end of this journal club. So here in, in Switzerland, this is close to 7 p.m. And uh, so it's already quite uh, late. Uh, thank you very much again, Alberto, for the very nice talk, for sharing with us uh, uh, these beautiful results. And also a deep thank to your colleagues. And uh, yeah, thank you for the, for the discussion, for, for the questions. I hope you enjoyed this journal club and okay see you see you soon and I see you all uh, bye bye so okay. have a nice day in the US and yeah okay. end of and, and nice evening thank you to Rafael, yeah. you to Rafael you. for for you know moderating this session and thanks everybody for coming in um yeah stay tuned and read our papers yeah. thank you everybody thank you, thank you. bye bye, -bye.